<laughs> Dee, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure. I it's have a pleasure, Nathan. been wanting to speak to you for a while. <laughs> um, so I went down the rabbit's hole and I found all these amazing uh, coincidences and similarities with us yeah. uh, as filmmakers and artists. Uh, the first being that we're both born in March. So you're fourth? No. No? You're not? No. Am I wrong? No, I'm in January. Are you really? Yeah. I swear to God online I, think I read it that may it was March 4. Been... Yeah, it may have been reported incorrectly. It has. Unbelievable. Deliberately, it... probably, because, you know, your birthday is your ID. Yeah. 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 Because I'm 14th of March, so when I read yours as 4th of March, I thought, oh, that was nice. That's another okay. connection, but it's different. I guess <laughs> I bow, bow, I've, bummed, <laughs> I've bombed on that one. Um, <laughs> um, actors we both worked with, um, Chris Kirby in The Wheel. Yes. And I worked with him in Queen of the Damned. Right. Can you remember your experience with Chris? Was there much to it? Do you remember? Um, okay, let me recall. With, this is with the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did Chris do? Oh my God. Now the you've tall, the me. tall African with the shaved head. Yeah. Big American guy. Chris he might have had was, a bit part. Maybe. No, Chris no? had. Uh, Chris had. It was a really strange movie because it was so um, isolated. Okay. You know, it, had, it was an experiment and then Chris was fantastic in the as, as part of the boardroom and right. he was oh look he he just absolutely nailed it <laughs> he is such a lovely a actor. actor and um, quite you know there, there had to be sort of this friendly sinister crowd you know this committee yep. the committee of sinister um, medical experimenters of the future yep. And so Chris was so well cast in that. He was just lovely in that. It's funny, was it almost a compression kind of style when you said it was the, the movie? Was it, was it more kind of one room, claustrophobic, kind of like pie it was, or cube? It was. There were just three kind of um, sets in, in the wheel. It's yep. now called Soldier Protocol. I picked up on that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. But there's the, the actual um, sort of steel room where the guy gets experimented on. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the two scientists monitor in their sort of computer, sort of monitor, um, you know, housing thing, yep. all in the wheel in this sort okay. of underground facility. Cool. And then, of course, the committee of which Chris was, Chris was one of them. He was, he was great. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So good. Yeah, I remember being on stage with him and the actors all had their direction. But he kind of, I wouldn't say over overrode rode the director, but he did a funny thing where he, he sort of turned to all of the actors and said, "Just be careful because I'm gonna I'm gonna derobe my cape. I'm taking my cape off in this." You know, he just went yeah, that yeah, little yeah. bit further, and it was great because it was memorable. I remember seeing the footage yeah, back and yeah. going because he stood out from the other guys because he made that decision. Yeah, I thought that was clever. Yeah, no, he because you know when when he's in a scene, you're you're just drawn to him. Mm. You know, you're mm. drawn to him. He's got that Absolutely. quality of you know when they when he's in a scene or when when you walk into a room he's mm. he's kind of got this very very strong mm. presence mm. amazing mm. well i've got a few things few points there but i might i might get into the guts first because okay. i've got a few things okay. there's a few things i want to ask you um so remember i was telling you about how i had Corey Haim attached to a film that yes. unfortunately bombed yeah. Um, it was really sad. I, I, I'd felt in my career, I'd reached that point where I was supposed to get my first properly funded film. Yes. Government funding and all the rest and had gone through the whole nine yeah, yards yeah. with Screen Australia and all the two months on that bloody yeah, A to yeah. Z budget report, you know, the one. And uh, Corey was supposed to be flying out, you know, a week before he did. And then he died. I think it was a week. It was, a, it was only a week before difference. And uh, I was devastated. Uh, and I had grown up, I guess, as a teenager, watching his entire catalogue. Yeah, watching watching him all the way through. Absolutely, from you know, yeah. from Lucas all the way through. Yeah, and yeah. so when I discovered that you were local and I knew who you were, yeah, and that you directed Double O Kid, I became very excited. Yeah, yeah. And I know very we're going back in time. Yeah. But that's 1993, and I yeah. know I, I really feel like 1993 was a was a pivotal year in cinema because. That's when Reservoir Dogs came out. Yeah. I actually technically shot my first film in 1993. Wow. You were okay. shooting Double O Kid in 93. What a yeah. fantastic year. So, I mean, the cast is incredible. The, the cast was amazing because the producer, Stephen Paul, was 
a child actor. Right. So he knew oh, all the actors and he sense. was, uh, I think he still is John Voigt's um, manager. Right. So he managed a lot of actors and so he would just make phone calls and yeah. they'd go, yeah, sure, Stephen. Oh, I love you it. Know. I so love there was, it. and you know, sort of some of them weren't working as much as they would want to have worked at the time, you know. Yeah. So there was Bridget Nielsen yes. and Wallace Shawn and, you know, the, a whole a whole range of them. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Bridget Nielsen as well and because mm. she would have, she, she'd popped, I mean, she'd done Red Sonja, she'd done Rocky IV. She yeah, was yeah. huge at the time. Yeah, yeah. What was that, how did you find working with her? Look, she was lovely. She was a lovely person, actually. And um, I don't know if she really wanted to... To act? To act. I felt, you know, yeah, some I of feel those, that. Yeah, I some of that. those, some actors just want to act, you know. Yeah, um, and other And others are sort of, well, this is a job, I'm going to make some facet. money. Yeah, it's yeah. another facet yeah, yeah. of their, I feel that. their sort of celebrity life. Yeah, yeah, because yep. then we saw her on that reality TV show as well, following, and I felt exactly what you said. Uh, you know, someone yeah, could yeah. model or act or yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, be a, a celeb in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What a what a great observation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and also John Rhys Davies. Yeah, I mean, John Rhys Davies. Oh, that's he's a legend. And they they sort of like they were very pro. You know, very sort of okay. What are the lines? What are you? they Let's knew go. they were on a B grade action movie because <laughs> you know? he, so, he'd done Raiders of the Lost Ark hadn't he yeah. before then and and you know they sort of you know they're humble enough to come and mm. do a, a low part and they give it their go and yep. and um, yep. what yeah a, what and they're nice you know nice people mm. nice people he and was a nice person Karen Black I know I mean five easy lo- pieces that's right and she's she was amazing. lovely too she was lovely yeah she seems really nice when you see lovely her. person yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, I liked her. Yeah. Um, and also Seth Green, a young Seth Green. Young He's... Seth Green, and that was really interesting having mm. Seth Green because mm. Corey mm. didn't really want, he, he was worried about Seth. As competition. As competition. And so he sort of sabotaged those scenes in a way. Wow. You know? Wow. And yeah. so <laughs> he, he was, the, you know, you. And I think Seth was aware of that as well. Amazing. And so um, it was it's interesting dynamics. Oh, geez, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. I tell you interesting what, dynamics. Whereas the older actors, they didn't worry about that. Yeah. They yeah. didn't worry Just about that. Just did the that. job. Yeah. Mm. So there's a young competition. Um, yeah. Is it true that Ethan Randall was originally cast to play yeah. the Corey role? Yeah. But, Ethan was, I think he was 14, mm. 13, 14 at the time. Yeah. And he was going to be great. Mm-hmm. And oh, then, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then Stephen goes, ah, he's a nobody. He's a nobody <laughs> catch, you know. And um, so um, the, 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 the buyers want somebody to hang off, you know. Right. And so Corey, I think, was 17 at the time. And so we go, ah, Stephen, but the, the script's for a kid, yeah. you know. Yeah. And Corey's now nearly... 18 mm. and he says no but we haven't got a choice we haven't got a choice and so it sort of changed the dynamics of the script a little bit because the double o kid was meant to be a kid yeah right yeah it was kid yeah a kid yeah. you know and so um mm. so that gave challenges to the mm. to the story but double o kidding instead of double o seven for people who yeah yeah who don't yeah. Know. yeah that's right so um you know 13 your old kid was going to be, that's what the script was written for. Sure. So yeah. you reminded, reminded me of Lost Boys because that was written for kids and Shoemaker um, fought to get them just that little bit older, mm. to 18 years, years old or whatnot. Mm. So it's, mm. there must have been a few scripts floating around in that period of a similar kind of uh, dynamic where they, or demographic where they needed to change yeah. it to suit. And, and interestingly enough, it was the, um, you know, the start of, I, I think the start of video. So yes. we need um, we need a name Content. to hang in. And yeah. as soon as Corey was cast, you know, the Things different happened. territories came in with their with their with their money. You know, Love it. that's how they Love that's it. how they funded it. Um, also, want to mention Nicole Eggett because I mean yeah, I know yeah, that Nicole they had Eggett done three, three three films together, but I wanted to let you know as well. Um, my last film, Lady Terror, which mm. I've dedicated to Corey, in fact. Mm. 
uh, the film they did, Blown Away, was was massively in, in, inspired uh, me to shoot my, my recent movie. Wow. And so I dedicated okay. and I actually dedicated it to him in the credits. Yeah. It screened at Monster Fest just recently. It comes out this wow, year. Wow, fantastic. And, and that's great. Thank you. And the Blown Away was such a heavy influence on me. I just I, it's my favorite two Corey's movie and because yeah, obviously yeah. she was in it as well. But yeah. I know you had obviously worked with her before they'd done Blown Away. Um, but tell yeah. us about yeah, Nicole Leggett. Like was she so very Nicole, green? When you, when Nicole you... was um uh she didn't seem confident with Hollywood at that time. You know, she Still was young. yeah, young and stuff and mm. and um she was very professional. I remember her being very professional for her age. Mm. And um I later read somewhere that I think she became a kind of a whistleblower. Yeah, right. Because she you would know, have gone she on to blew the whistle, and I tried yeah. to contact her, but I never managed to contact her. You, it's funny you said that, because mm. um, I mean, I know they did um, just one of the girls, and then blown away, etc. And then she did Baywatch. Mm. But th I saw a thing uh, recently with her whistleblowing Scott Bayo. Right. Yeah, because of because, what, because it's, of, it's um, so interesting yeah. with Corey, the experience yeah. with Corey and and Corey Feltman. Exactly. And um, it, so at that time, I think it was. Um, it know, was going down. It was going down. Gosh. And, yeah. Did you feel that when you worked with Corey that, because I remember some producers in LA mm. decided advising me not to work with him. That was saying one guy was mm. pretty horrible, but he said, you know, he's done every drug he can think of and you can't, you won't be able to manage him. He's a bit off the rails. Well, I was very, I was very fortunate because uh, Andrea Buck had, was, um, was one of the principal writers on Double O Kid. And um, she was an associate producer, and she managed Corey. Right. And um, she's a real people person. Got it. And so, I don't know how we would have managed yep. without without her, right. because she just calmed him down. Mm. You know, he mm. he'd come on set, totally hyper at mm. seven in the morning. You know, mm. wanting painkillers, mm. and we couldn't give it to him. Yeah. And and he said, I'm not coming out of my trailer. I can't come out of my trailer. And he's in a sort of a a sort of panic detox or whatever mm. and um, Andrew would go in and calm him down and talk to him for an hour and mm. you know mm. just mentor and nurture him mm. and then he'd mm. come out and then he'd act mm. he would just as soon as he as Had he came on, on set he'd mm. switch on and he would just Incredible. act yeah yeah because so he, was go he was going through a hard time mm. and I didn't realize you know when I was in the 90s I didn't you just thought, ah, people are on drugs, you know. Da, da. You don't realise yep. the deep that sense why they were on drugs. Why they yeah, were that, on drugs. That's a really good point. Yeah, because um, you could even throw back to flower power and the hippies mm. of the late 60s. That's right. Th that's say, sort what's of what you thought. as well, perhaps. Yeah, and that's, you sort of thought, well, this mm. is just LA. You know, it's I'm, just I'm, the I'm period, just, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, you know, just mm. the temporary, mm. Um, mm. temporary <laughs> Hollywoodite, you know, <laughs> LAite. So I'm just temporary and you don't really know the culture properly and you, you go in there you go, well, this is what kids do. This is normal. Maybe this is normal. But in retrospect, mm. from what I know now, mm. you go, we, we know Very now irregular. what is going on and we know why mm. he screwed up mm. Mm. and he screwed up because of certain people. Yep, absolutely. It's funny because watching mm. uh, the two Corys, their reality mm. TV show, which I've watched multiple times, yeah. and it, there was exactly that moment you described where he was in the trailer and he wouldn't come out, yeah. and Feldman was, you know, had, had just had enough, you know, yeah. Um, and but but I did feel that he was robbed of the of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I do believe look, that he I, deserved I, that. Yeah, look, he, you know, those th that sort of group of kids that came up, mm. they were they went through hell when yeah. they were kids. You know yep. the young yep. actors, yep. and I think Nicole was part of that. Yeah, yeah. And I think I she think survived right. it. I'm I'm sure mm. she was, mm. and um, you know and yep. many other kids, mm. and um, mm. the mm. they were sort of brushed. You know, sort of oh, just problem kids and stuff. They were sort of not given their full credit. You know, you survived Hollywood. And that that kind of um, right, the, the beast that it was. Yes, yeah. you survived the beast and mm. you're still mm. walking. And you know, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. you know, it's like yeah. I, I see Corey yeah. Feltman yeah. now and he is, you he's can see survived. He's, a, he's survived, but mm. he's a damaged survivor, you know. That's true, that's true. He's getting yeah. a lot of flack for um, 
the music he performs. Yeah, um, but you know, if you know what, because mm. now I'm I I I'm dealing with, uh, mm, yes. and I report on people who are in their seventies, right, having survived wow. similar experiences, mm. but not not Hollywood not Hollywood ones, mm -hmm. but exactly the same formula, mm -hmm. and um, you know that child abuse, mm -hmm. split personality, mm -hmm. dissociation, mm -hmm. and. It probably makes for good actors, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's true. You know, it's true, though, isn't it? Because a lot of actors, they're trying to escape their normal life yeah. somewhat. Yeah. I, I remember being in film school and being very aware that out of the 40 students, mm. there was only a handful of filmmakers there. Most of mm. the people were lost. And that actually annoyed me because I felt like they were there because they didn't mm. know what to do. But there yeah, were yeah, serious yeah, filmmakers yeah. there trying to make films. Yeah, yeah. And I see that with acting sometimes. I see that person that's lost and comes in and says, oh, maybe I'll be an actor. Yeah, yeah. And I said, like, but hang on, where's that coming from? How did yeah, you come yeah. to no, that? Look, yeah. I think, yeah. I, I mean, I've now my view of um, society's ills are completely changed. Yeah. Completely changed. Yeah. You know, you think of all the guys in prison. Yeah. Why did they land up in prison? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 85% of them or whatever were abused as children, you know, whatever. Oh, that's so, right. We, yeah, we spoke about that the other day, didn't we? About yeah, yeah. Quite, yeah. So you know, whatever yeah, the percentage yeah, is, yeah. probably varies. But I hear that. Um, yeah, but you know. gosh, gosh. Well, um, and also just wanted one, one, just one more thing about the Double O Kid was that obviously it became a game. It was a, a huge '80s yeah. game, the Double Switch, of which I was not part of. But, 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 but I remember the the early days of it. You know, them um, planning the choices, and I, you yeah. know, Eric Brayman was running it I think at that time yeah and um, I go oh my god wait what's this what's this let's for you know let's here. go make yeah. a movie yeah unreal yeah and uh, yeah I guess the and the 90s and even the 80s was great for that mm. the amalgamation of, of uh, video and then games uh, yeah yeah and, uh, the cross-reference of the medium and yeah yeah I love all that um, so next question well actually I was going to throw back to okay. some of our similarities Jake Ryan Jake Ryan, yes. So you've directed yes. him in Out of the Shadows. I directed him in a scene in my film Colorblind. Oh, so we're both, wow. We're both, yeah, he's an awesome he actor. He's an awesome Amazing. actor. His physical prowess is, is quite something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had him, I, in, in my film, uh, mm. I needed someone to overpower me yeah, and beat yeah. me up, and, I, and he was perfect. So he's got a, yeah, yeah. I think he's got a gold medal for Taekwondo. I've got a silver medal. So I thought, wow. this is going to be this is gonna Yeah, because he is, he's just... Also, just such a lovely person mm, with the mm, strong mm. acting ability. He's mm. got a really strong acting ability. Mm -hmm. But the interesting mm -hmm. thing about that movie, yep. that's a movie I probably wouldn't want to discuss. It was it's about no it was about Baal. No problem. You know the, yep. the Baal. Yep. And I actually think yeah. there's a in with with almost with every movie, I always find there's a parallel journey. Oh, you're spot on. Um, of spot reality on. spot on and and the story so mm. it's sort of the 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 script is being played out the in, parallel universe the yeah it's life being imitating played art. out yeah life imitating art yeah so what happened was on that movie which is a horror movie about Baal yes I go I'm dealing with real <laughs> issues Got and it. and um, I did not enjoy that experience fair enough it was and a really weird experience, actually. My mother said to me, and I think I told you she's a psychologist, she said mm. to me when I was very young, and I, it was such great advice, she said, Nath, in life, there's going to be film, some films that you're involved in that you love, some that you hate, some yeah. that you despise, some that are okay, and everything else in between. And it's so true, isn't it? Because so not true. every film is enjoyable. And you know, the interesting thing about The Jammed, oh, yes. I knew we were dealing with mm -hmm. a very dark subject. So we had... Um, a counsellor and sort of counsellor mentor on set on, on set on crucial days. Amazing. And it was mm. so good. Yep. You know, Imperative. he just diffused and, and mm. broke that mm. that the, any sort of pain that would be mm. translated mm -hmm. to to real life. You must see my film Tomboys because it's okay, about it's about that. rape revenge. And right. my mother was on set actually being uh, being an on site counsellor. And I'm, See, I must, that's a very, you I did the, exactly the same film. thing. Yeah, the same send me thing. that film. Yeah. And that's, that film I called Compression because it was five or six actors all locked into one room, real, yeah, in yeah. real time. 
Wow. You'd love it. Okay. I'll, I'll send you. Okay, I'll, send, I'll send it to you. Send it to I'll me. Send you I'd love to see yeah, that. And I think you'd, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd yeah, relate. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Five country girls kidnap a serial rapist to seek revenge. End of story. And they. they That's right. I've and heard they enact, of it. They enact I've heard revenge. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, that yeah. was my first kind of commercial feature. Wow, so, I've heard yeah, of that. Yeah. I've never been. I've never managed to see it. I'm Someone was talking you. about it. Yeah, I'll send it to you because yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah. you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we had to have that because uh, we had moments where who girls, was, girls who were, was, who was stuff in, was coming up. Who was who was in that? Uh, I, look, honestly, originally it was written for Kesty Morassi. Yeah, yeah. But she was she'd done Wolf Creek. I couldn't get her. Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. hot to trot and off on something else, and I gave the role to uh, a, a girlfriend of mine that was a filmmaker who'd been yeah. on every single film and I felt that she was ready. Yeah. And her name was Candace Day. Yeah. Uh, she'd done a little bit on Ghost Rider and Charlotte's Web, so she yeah. knew set. Um, but the, the only name as such really was Jenny Lovell. Okay. From, um, uh, well, she's done heaps of films around Melbourne. Yeah. I think her mother was Mr. Squiggle. Okay. The woman on Mr. Squiggle. Okay. I um, can't remember the so name. that's, because yeah. that would bring up serious... This brought up Internal some stuff. stuff. Well, we, 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 we had five, I think it was four or five, maybe th four or three monologues yeah. from different characters um, you know, expressing what had happened to them mm -hmm. with their sexual assault. But when the girls went to do it, other stuff came up that I wasn't prepared for. Jeez. So that's where Mum's counselling came in because wow. I was on her property. Uh, yeah, very interesting experience. Very interesting. But the only, the only compliment I, that I really took to heart was that the girl, at the end of it, the girls said, I can't believe a guy, a man wrote that script. Because I was that is, very that, that's empathetic. That's amazing. That's amazing. That was my, that was my compliment. Okay. But yeah, I'm sending it to you. Okay, you'll all right, it. perfect. Um, another, another coincidence was John Brumpton. Now you, I think he was, yeah. was he in Wentworth when you directed Wentworth? He, he was in Wentworth. Because I acted with him recently in, a, in an indie, indie film called The Debt Collector. And we had a fight scene. <laughs> right. And it was a little, I was a little bit, uh, what's the word? Um, oh gosh, what is the word? intimidated because yeah, yeah. he just posted up on YouTube all of his old kickboxing videos oh and he was God. pretty brutal and yeah, I had yeah, just yeah. recent I had rewatched Romper Stomper because he was in that yeah yeah and I thought oh my god and so I I, <laughs> I just love the the um, the physical like I worked with um, Masa Yamaguchi right he was in the jam yeah. and I think they're real fighters you know they are they're very and so they're, they're, they're yeah, so they're right. full on. they come in and they bring it yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. I remember he, he pulled me aside before the scene and he said, you, you've done some martial arts, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, okay, good. Because like, <laughs> I can now beat you gonna, up. <laughs> yeah, because he was already <laughs> prepping. Exactly. I can now beat the yeah. hell out of you. But you're right though, aren't you? It's like it, it, all of these different actors, they, they're coming with their own yeah, thing. Yeah. They're coming with their gusto and their own background yeah, yeah. and their own skill set. And they're all different. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? And I guess, I guess that's our job, isn't it? It's Putting almost on the same like, page. I, you know, half the, half the, the art, I think, of... Mm being behind the camera, you know, directing or whatever, is you've just got to assess what the, hell what is, the story what could is. Happen yeah. And, what, yeah. and then and then you just feed feed the um, you know the machine, let's the call machine, it. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. and you know just to get the best yeah. out of people. I just thought of um, Don the Simpson when you said that, you know, he would say, you know, we serve her. We serve the movie. Once the yeah, movie is yeah, yeah. announced, we serve her because yeah, we, it's a we, beast of its own, you know? That's right. It's so true, though, isn't it? It's so it's true. So it's, true. It's like I remember after the first um, screening of The Jammed, I go, oh, it's not my movie anymore. It's the, yeah. the public owns the it now. The letting go. It's, that's it's a, a big letting go step, thing. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I found that with a lot of... Um, a lot of, let's say, competitors on, on the way mm. up that couldn't let go. Yeah, yeah. And didn't go any further. Yeah, it's that yeah. whole step from indie to commercial, and it's yeah, now yeah. someone else's property. Um, saw a great interview with Kiefer Sutherland about Lost Boys, I think it was, and, he, yeah. and him saying, um, "Oh, once we made it, it's not ours; it's yours. You know, we, we don't own it anymore." It's and quite thought, interesting because wow. that there's that French actor. What was his name? I can't mm. remember. But, In um, oh, he he not was from just, um, professional uh, Jean, mm. not not Jean Renard. Je, no, uh, is it? Are we thinking? Yeah, it's, it's oh, I'm just not Gerard Depardieu. Yeah, Gerard, Gerard Depardieu. Depardieu. He yep, says, yep. I don't even watch my own movies. Yep. <laughs> you know, because it's <laughs> a job. He's it's in a and job. He's out. I'm, yeah. I'm out. You know, yep. 
you uh, you do what you like with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Um, that's awesome. All right, and the other thing, uh, the other actor was um, Dennis Cord, who I think was in Jammed. Dennis, Dennis remember yes. he used to be on Home and Away? Yes, yes. Because he, he was the first, I, I will probably have to say, the first professional actor I worked with when I was acting in Radio Samurai. It had him and Brooks Atchwa. Oh, okay. And I okay. loved him. Yeah, yeah. He was special. Yeah. I remember him saying, Lovely guy. isn't he great? Yeah. Good to work with. Yeah. So your experience was, was good with him? On the, oh. about a, 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 did you have a bit part? On the yeah, game? you just had a bit part. Yeah. But he just, <laughs> just locked in as like, oh, first take, do we need to do another one? I don't <laughs> think so. You know, that kind of one thing. One take. I yeah, it. yeah. I remember him uh, and his wife because they were playing um, real husband and wife on Home and Away for many years. And um, yeah, yeah. Remember them? Yeah, yeah. And he pulled me aside after the and, screening. And, and so I can't remember her name. Just lost. Yeah, her. I've lost her as well. She also had a part in the jam. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's she was lovely. Yeah, mm-hmm. meeting her. Lo- lovely couple. The Jammed is such a great film. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. And mm. I, uh, I don't know if you can enjoy it, but you. I enjoyed it as a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed yeah. the and I enjoyed uh, you tackling uh, such a, yeah. a fierce subject, and I was aware of those police, you know, that had mm. um, uh, said to the girls, you know, you, you know, you'll pay me back by doing time, yes. so to speak. I yeah, knew about yeah. that. I knew about that horrible story had surfaced that. That yeah. the police, the you know, the corrupt police were telling the prostitutes that they they wouldn't serve time, but they'd have to serve them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew, about, and it it's, sickened me. Yeah, it's it was quite interesting because that was, I'd read the story, mm. w- wrote it very quickly because it just poured out, and um, I'd sort of moved to Australia and I wasn't getting anywhere, you know, felt a bit lost. You know, life was a bit of an ice flow, mm-hmm. and I thought I'm just going to make this movie, mm-hmm. just chuck it all in, mm-hmm. and awesome. and um, then give up the industry <laughs> 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 and do something else. You know, I thought this this industry is not it's serving all me properly. It is just, all or okay, I'm just going to go all in. Yeah, you know? I love that. And um, it sort of just worked. I said, okay, we've got to start on a date. I'm going to choose a date, and that that um, that momentum. Is that just, momentum. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of it was one or two takes. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, okay, if, if you give it all, we don't need to do it again, you know? So the, the girls just gave it everything. They were just amazing, yeah, all the, of them. the leads are amazing. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to touch on, which I mm. think you'll find fascinating, because I know you wrote a book. Is it called Enough? Enough is Enough? Yeah. About, based on the Port Arthur massacre? Yeah, it was, so I run a blog. Yeah. I run a news site. And I, I started that like um, 2012. Mm-hmm. And then people came on board and started mm-hmm. writing articles for it. And quite a few academic people as well, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so that book was just um, chapters where articles taken oh, out of. Collation. Uh, collated yeah. from um, Mary Maxwell's art- articles and my, my articles. Interesting. Mm. Because I think you'll, you'll, you'll laugh when I tell you that I've turned down the role to play Martin Bryant twice. Whoa! Are you serious? The first time I got offered it, it was a movie called Blonde Volvo, which was a company shooting yeah. in Queensland. Yeah. And I remember specifically getting that email and thinking, oh my God, this is my big break because I'm blonde haired, I'm blue eyed, I can do this part, I'm intense. Yeah. And my mother was so Worried. upset because she'd yeah. been counselling some of the survivors. Jesus. So I declined. And I thought, shit. And then you got another offer. Then 10 years later, it comes back. And the filmmakers, it was called Wasp, which stood for, I guess, um, oh, God, what was his... Well, it would have been, now, Nathan, would have been, that would have been, is, that is fascinating. Yeah, Wasp, because do you remember there was, a, there was that thing where just before he kind of opened mm. fire in the cafe, he said, awful lot of wasps around today to the waitress. And she said, what are you talking about? And so... I haven't heard that. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah, wasps. Uh, wasps. You know, wasps must be. Well, it's, uh, it's a bit um, spooky, isn't uh, it? Wasps, would that be referring to um, undercover... There's that, and then and then they went another step further, and they said it stands for White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. 
There was all these conspiracies. But I will tell you, and I will, I'm kid you not, when I got the second offer, mm -hmm. which came 10 years later, I distinctly remember lying in bed and contemplating it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, don't, I can't, I don't know, I don't even know what time of day it was. Yeah. But I suddenly felt and thought I saw the presence of a dark angel come into my doorway. And I, I was be so surprised. scared. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm, I mean, ho hopefully I was dreaming it and I wasn't hallucinating, but I had this real feeling and this presence and I was actually like scared to the core and I said, I, I can't do this film. I think it was a good idea not to do that. Do you know that. what I mean? It was a good idea not to. The Guardian Because Angels. they haven't, yeah, they haven't got the, the story right ever. They haven't. Um, and so you can't, it, it's just to get involved in the... in The, the nuts and bolts. It, yeah, to get involved in the wrong yeah. telling of the story right. is, yeah. is, is, is a dark venture. I always felt like it should have been approached from him as a person, as a young child, mm. and what happened and what were the what were the, the key instances that made him become who he was, but mm. that you would end the film at the at the happening. Well the interesting thing is that because of the news site, mm. um, I did a little video on, on Port Arthur mm -hmm. and um, a retired barrister spoke to everyone. Ah. The gunsmith, yep. the the um, or to Wendy Skur, yep. he spoke to everyone and he pieced together the story. Mm, okay. And um, uh, it's, it's <laughs> very, very strange. It's, it's a still really, strange. really complex story. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't believe he was at the cafe. A lot of people don't. No. There's, 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 you know, there's, there's just so I mean, much we, we, ha it, we also were given... Um, a medical document that he Bryant was taken to Adelaide mm -hmm. and oh. and analyzed given drugs by a psychiatrist Gosh. there Gosh. so fascinating story yeah yep. um, fascinating yep. story but I, I think it was a good thing. Do you think it's a good that thing that down? I turned it down? Absolutely. Because I just, I just, I just, and I because thought, you're propagating mm. in it was it was almost a, for me it would have been exploitation. In yeah, the wrong and, way. and it's exploitation in a sense that, um, firstly, one should really only try to tell the true story. Yeah. So if you're not if you're not telling the true story, or you're just guessing and, and making it for entertainment, <laughs> mm. I just I think it's, oh, I'm uh, with you on that because yeah. it's that whole thing, isn't the difference between movies and film? Like a movie is popcorn and mm. coke at the cinema, it's, which it shouldn't be. It, it's a little bit like yeah. I would not watch the. Um, Pennsylvania crash, right. the the nine eleven plane mm -hmm. that crashed in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd written quite extensively about that, mm. and I just thought, why are you guys acting in that movie? The movie's fake, yep. right What's from the, the you know, mm. and um, the actual site, you know, if you look at Lockerbie, mm. you see huge chunks of the plane, mm. massive. You know, seats everywhere, mm. wings, engines, mm. all that. Mm. And the site of the Pennsylvania thing was quickly cordoned off, but there's some first photographs. Mm. There's nothing there. It's just a hole in the ground. And an FBI guy said, there's nothing bigger than a telephone book. <laughs> you know, and you go, no, that's, that's not a plane. The God. plane, and, and then we learned later that the plane, mm. the planes were, mm. were, taken down at a certain airport mm -hmm. and so you uh, as a mm -hmm. filmmaker and a uh, an actor i just i worry about stories that are mm -hmm. propagated mm. for the wrong purpose the wrong purpose and i think we'd both agree that uh writing or directing or acting from personal experience mm. and giving a truth to that is going to outweigh yeah. the exploitation and and if you don't mm. know what the if you what don't the know, true yeah. story, You've at least you're telling, mm. if you're telling the story from that personal thing, mm. point of view, mm. then th that'll be real. That's real. Yeah, gotcha. And you're not, you're not making a judgment of what, what you can't judge on. Absolutely. So it's almost not making an uneducated yeah. uh, decision yeah. about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's funny you say it because... Speaking to you, it, that is just to me common sense, but it yeah, just, yeah. It, it, it's really exists. No, look, I tell People you, I've been involved. Stuff. I know, and and they, they, you know, you you handle, sit around they, the table yep. with distributors yep. and they go, "Look, we just got to, <laughs> we've got to 
we've just got to blow the shit up. And then, but that's not, that's not uh, what happened. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. You know, we've yeah. got to have yeah. the assassination or whatever. Yeah. See, I do love my, uh, my genre stuff if it's tongue in cheek. You know, like I That's do some right. stuff where there's the fast car, the hot girl, the gun, you yeah, know, the yeah, boss, yeah. and it's almost like machete. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I love that because I, I love I love because it for you know, entertainment. But I, but but I'm but I'm calling what it is first. Yeah, you know, uh, there's a, there's a movie and I forgot what it's called, mm. but um, it's the re, the mm. retired hitman yeah. that um, um, fails and becomes you know whatever it Not, is. But was it the, was it nobody? Was it the, no, the re no. fairly recent film Nobody? The guy who sort of you think he's a family man, but he's a he's an undercover no, agent. No, I, I don't, no, I don't no. think it's that. But I love the thing mm. where, you know, you're walking out and there's this massive explosion behind, yeah. and he doesn't even bother about it. <laughs> you know, just it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's a trademark it's a, shot. Yeah, yeah, I think I've that, even done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I, I mean, call it what it is. You know, I yeah, think yeah. if you're doing it. Uh, well, For that's what I think, the relief, and that's what I think makes um, humanity human, mm. is that you can laugh. Yeah, you've got to be able to laugh, laugh at yourself. Laugh at yourself or yeah. laugh at people, but yeah. you're not allowed to laugh at people anymore. No. <laughs> you know? I've got to be careful now. The, what the hell? Yeah. You can't What's even laugh. What's happened to us? What just the, yeah because i was i was the same i was brought up if i can't laugh at myself <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't even really be doing it you yeah. know like it's and it's now you know if you're african-american mm. you can't even oh, tell african-american jokes anymore you know no no it's like excuse me oh, look i watched i watched revenge of the nerds the other night yeah, just yeah. for fun and i thought my god i couldn't i couldn't tell any of these jokes now i couldn't <laughs> make this film now <laughs> i used to, i used to pull one-liners from it to my brother and sister to make them laugh yeah, yeah. i couldn't do that now it's no. it's just yes yeah, so different isn't it we we've gone into a little bit of a crazy sort of fascist yeah. kind of thinking yeah absolutely yeah well i'd love to be back in 1993 on the set of okay. double o kid with you that would okay. be bloody dream come true i find i feel that was the heyday i love the 90s you know it was it, i'll tell you a little story about that please so i i stephen paul had sold my first movie, Scavengers, and they made a heap of money yep. out of Scavengers. Yep. It because it was the video, video boom, video boom, mm. and so he said, "Come, come to America. You know, we'll make a movie." So we, we went to America and started working on the script. You know, things take always much longer, and so he just put us up. Mm. You know, oh, right. put us up in a. Thing and we were going to make the movie it got delayed and everything anyway so we hung in there and then we made double o kid so we're down shooting in L in downtown los angeles and lovely line producer eric brayman and the cops arrive and and you know they're just chatting because we're doing some action scenes down there and um he says oh the I hope they don't ask for the permit. We haven't got permitted. We're not permitted to shoot, right. but it looks like we're permitted. You gotcha. Know? And yep. he says they probably won't ask. Anyway, so we carry on. And then I sort of migrated to where discussion was. We were waiting about 15 minutes. And Eric grabs me. He goes, no, no, no. Don't go near them. We haven't got your visa yet. Wow. <laughs> and wow. I've been there six well, months. Really I go, sure. what do you mean you haven't got my <laughs> visa? <laughs> No, we haven't got your visa. Wow. Your wow. working visa. Just stay in the background. Just hide away. Wow. <laughs> so, so even at that point and at that level, it's we still were, winging we a on prayer. The, it's still st just still go for it. a prayer, you know. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. B it's grade, like low budget action. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know. CD it was actually, sort of thing. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you know, the days where you sort of had very little money. Mm. And, but access, though, to... But, access and stuff and then you go mm. and um but you could go to the restaurant and get your mm. valet parking mm. your mm. car parked valet so suddenly you feel mm. like a mm. uh, wow Echelon. you feel a, yeah. amazing yeah. but you where's the money for the meal you yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> i actually remember a friend of mine saying that he'd, he'd got to la one of his one of his first major trips and transitions and and uh, and he was at uh, at some restaurant uh, with some celebrities and he said to me I don't think I can afford the meal. Like, <laughs> he'd got, yeah, it yeah. finally arrived, but 
he looked at the menu and just went, how am I going to pay for this? You know, it was yeah, exactly yeah. what you described. So much fake it till you make it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I think even my friend Jane Badler was talking about that recent, like she had a, a high point in her career and you see the photo and, and you'd think, oh, you know, she's made it, she's New York, it's A-list, it's millions. And apparently she was like down to her last dollar, you know, at the time. I of think, the, of the I photo. think that's a, a, there was a lot of that in LA. Yeah. They, but they, but if you're in LA, you know that the other people are similar, uh, similar. hustling. Hustling. hustling Everyone, yeah. Everyone's hustling. Everyone's hustling. I've, got, I've talked to a, um, another friend recently who's uh, you know, been on television for years in LA and uh, you can look at his whole career. It's quite mm. illustrious. And even recent, and he'd be, he'd be 50s and he mm. just recently said to me, he's still hustling. You know, he said, it's a constant hustle. That'll never stop. You know, and I said, I really? Know. Hasn't gotten any easier? Like, and he's like, no, no, I still hustle. I think it's even harder now. Oh, I probably. I reckon it's harder. That renaissance, let's say the Mm. the Hollywood renaissance. I'm going to go to Mm. LA. I'm going to make it. What's your What's your take on that? Do you feel like that's a that's Um, a used as a used by date that's expired because we're we're now post COVID, 2023. I I don't know. I think it's it's got to be done differently. I Mm. think, you know, there are just some people that have the right agent, the right manager, the right look. They get sent Mm. at the right time. They. Get ch- just one little movie mm. and they shoot through. It's a timing thing. But other, mm. but other people I know struggle mm. for years, yeah. you know, yeah. don't quite make it. And I think there's a lot of talent that is just as good as, they're just yeah. as good as each other, but it's the yeah. opportunity they may, may, may not have That's had. That's right. They're, and sometimes they've been actors and they're even better and you think, why the hell am I not seeing yeah, them in some thing? great actors Gosh. and they just didn't quite, there's just that. something that, didn't quite make it and so you know I often wonder and Mm. I think that's like in a lot of a lot of it's not only the movie business I think that's a lot of just in life uh, yeah in different industries you often wonder if there's a a path mapped out I think that too I wonder if we've had the cards laid out before Mm. us and we just have to basically walk the path Mm. and we have these T intersections where we can kind of change it a little bit but whether you like it or not you'll be sucked back into that original game you know (laughs) maybe that's what I think I think we're in a bloody game maybe I can play double switch and see if that's uh, if it happens in the game (laughs) no I'm just kidding Um, because that's a choose your own adventure that game isn't it you know you you press this button go left it takes you this way or that way that's right you know that film run Lola Run, where like she yes. gets she gets to a T intersection and she thinks which way she chooses determines yes. her life path. Yeah, yeah. I love all that. I think it's, yeah, I think yeah. it's a, but I do think there is that 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 core that you that part of you that won't change. So even if you go off the path, it'll come back to you anyway. You know, I, you know. Now I've been dealing with with um, sort of this child yeah. child protection or child removal stuff, yep. and and all this other sort of news stuff mm. I go it almost feels like we're in a bloody computer program yeah nothing's gonna st- it just it's programs itself happen. out you know yeah and have and like you said coming from jammed even saying at that mm. point look I'm gonna put I'm gonna go all in and make this film mm. and whatever happens happens yeah yeah and the fact that you're still kind of in that you, well you're still now in, in two different fields yeah yeah it's it was gonna happen anyway yeah, right yeah, yeah. It's, 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 just it's weird life you know destiny it ha- well that's destiny yeah that's, that's yeah. destiny you know it's been an absolute pleasure talking it's to been you. so lovely and I, thank so you for lovely, your time Nathan. and thanks to uh, for you know be able to get all this on record it's been amazing okay and I wish you the best and Hopefully right. we'll cross paths again. You never know. Yeah, yeah. That'll I'm be sure. destiny or not. That'll yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks, Jay.